Rebuilding a Stuart Double 10 V steam engine part 2. Running the engine using compressed air to find out why it is not working properly, followed by some time in my ultrasonic cleaner. In this episode I'm going to be running this engine for quite a while, so the first thing I did was lubricate the cylinders. And I almost forgot. I used steam oil for the cylinders and general lubricating oil for all the other parts. This engine is currently not self-starting, it's blowing very badly, it doesn't have a lot of power and it leaks from possibly everywhere it can leak from. I'm not particularly interested in the random leaks around the gaskets and the lack of gaskets in the steam inlet. You can clearly hear that there's a constant blow from this engine and it's coming from the cylinder nearest the flywheel. Before I continue and confirm that this engine is worth rebuilding, I'm going to have a look inside it. The first thing to go is the steam chest cover, and here I'm removing the inlet manifold. I don't know what this gasket material is on the steam chest, it looks like sticky tape to me. All this nonsense will be removed in the fullness of time, when I rebuild the engine I will make new gaskets for it. I've just disconnected the eccentric rod from the valve fork, and here I'm removing the steam chest. Complete with the slide valve, which I think is the culprit, and immediately I notice that the port face is not very clean. It is at the bottom, but it's not at the top. The gunmetal slide valve is not in contact with the port face all the way. You can see this because it's only shiny at one end. And I'm fairly sure that this is what's causing most of the compressed air to rush straight through into the exhaust port. The first thing I need to do is clean up the slide valve. I'm using a piece of 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper on my ruler which forms a flat surface. This, by the way, is the problem. Have a close look at this image. The metal block that drives the slide valve is not square to the valve rod. This effectively lifts the valve away from the ports. It's just shoddy workmanship and there's quite a lot of this on the engine. This engine is very dirty and some of these cylinder cover bolts don't go all the way down. Rebuilding this engine is going to take some time, but I think it's worth it because the basic bones of the engine are quite good. In the next episode, I will probably partially dismantle the engine, but for now I'm putting it back together to see whether the valve is working. I filed the slot a bit wider in the slide valve, so it shouldn't be quite as badly influenced by the angle of the driving block. I will of course be making a new driving block for this side, and for the other side if that's equally as bad. As you can clearly see in here, there is a definite improvement. It's not blowing quite so badly, and I haven't adjusted the valve timing yet either. I'll stop talking at this point and just let you have a listen to it and watch it run. When I ran it at warp speed, nothing fell off, which is always a good sign. And that, by the way, is why I always run engines on the bench at a very high speed when I'm working on them, just to make sure that nothing comes loose. I slightly adjusted the timing of both of the eccentrics, and now the engine is running slowly very well. What I need to do now is clean up this engine thoroughly before I start work on it, and possibly repaint it. It's time to continue the job on my kitchen sink. This is an ultrasonic cleaner that I keep on the sink because it's just very useful to have it there. I'm going to use this stuff which is my favourite liquid for using in my ultrasonic cleaner. It's called Carbusonic. I'm going to fill the ultrasonic cleaner with very hot water. So I let the tap run into the pan for quite a while to warm up the pan and then I tip the contents into the ultrasonic cleaner. And I repeat this process two or three times. Recently I was given some new medication for my type 2 diabetes and it's called, wait for it, Dapper Glyphloxin and it seems to work by allowing the kidneys to pass some sugar into the urine which allegedly lowers the amount of sugar in my blood the only trouble is, when I see running water I need to use the toilet 
And this is a bit of a deja vu because when I filled this tank in real time from the sink in the kitchen, I needed to visit the toilet fairly urgently. But that's enough of that. I've put the Stuart double 10 engine into the mixture and I left it in the ultrasonic cleaner for an hour and a half. When I took it out of the cleaner, it looked like this. The action of the ultrasonic cleaner and the chemical was also removing the paint, which is fine because I won't have to do this as a separate job. This was after one hour in the cleaner, so I put it back in for a further 30 minutes, and I was really pleased to see this. Just about all of the paint had disappeared. The action of the paint removal is a good thing and a bad thing. In this case I'm pleased it was removed, but for certain other items I may put in the cleaner, I don't think I'd be too thrilled if they came out without the paint on them. That's it for this episode. I've put the lid back on the ultrasonic cleaner and I'm now going to do something more interesting. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.